Jurassic Awakening is the single best mod available for all of Ark Survival Ascended. Yep, I said it, and in this beginner guide, I'm going to back it up. This massive overhaul mod makes huge changes to the game, all while somehow making Ark feel even more like Ark than the current Ark feels like Ark. Ark. But before we get into that, I need to tell you that Jurassic Awakening is being worked on non-stop and updated constantly with major additions, improvements, bug fixes, etc. It's been really exciting to see the changes that have happened just in the couple of months that I've been aware of it, and the future is really bright for Jurassic Awakening. However, just know that this content is applicable as of today's date, mid-July 2024. While it does seem that the modding team has mostly finished tweaking things in the beginner, and mid-game difficulty areas of the island and they're now working on end-game content, don't be surprised if there's still some small changes coming after this video. Now the first thing you need to know about Jurassic Awakening is that the rates can't be changed. Kind of. Someone with admin access can go into the admin panel and change the settings from easy, medium, or hard. This will change rates somewhat and difficulty somewhat, but not all that significantly. The rates are low and the difficulty is high as ARC is intended to be a grind. But rather than feeling like grind after grind after grind like playing official ARC does, Jurassic Awakening feels like grind without any of the tedium due to their reworked progression system. Each tier of progression has its own tools, armor, tames, and more. So you feel like you truly are progressing. You aren't just grinding to hit level 38 and get a PT saddle, or level 62 to get the RG saddle and trank darts. Every level gained here makes it feel like you're progressing and learning something in a significant way. Also, as of right now, the mod has been developed for the island with its progression system meant to challenge you and reward you as you traverse the island map. Since it uses spawn containers from the island, the mod creatures will work and spawn on other maps. However, it's not recommended to be used on other maps at this point. The team does have plans to expand to other maps once their work on the island is done. Lastly, Jurassic Awakening is intended to be a standalone mod, not added to your world as part of a whole suite of mods. Jurassic Awakening completely reworks every single aspect of gameplay, and as such, Having other mods like Engram an Unlockers or anything else that may add or change Engrams or Dinos will kind of break it or they'll break each other. But trust me, and I know it sounds crazy to say, but once you get into Jurassic Awakening, you'll realize that you don't actually want any other mods. And for the record, Jurassic Awakening is the only mod that is coded so well and so completely that it actually runs 100% perfectly on my Series S and doesn't hinder performance in any way. So let's break this mod down into a few sections. We'll be going over beginner areas and the areas in general and kind of progression. We'll go over Dino AI and Dino Variants, Beginner Dinos, beginner tools and resources, and then the stat system and the XP system in Jurassic Awakening. And today we're mostly going to be going over levels 1 through, let's say, 25. And that should cover about your first 15 to 20 hours or so in Jurassic Awakening. The starter areas on Jurassic Awakening are the only places that you can spawn in. They are the three southern beach spawns on the island. Anyone familiar with Ark is familiar with them. As you progress through different parts of the island, the creatures become stronger, higher level, and more aggressive. And the progression goes Tier 1, Beach, Tier 2, Rivers slash Early Jungle, and Tier 3, Forest slash Grassland. After this, you start to get into the Swamp, the Redwoods, the Mountainous Region, and the Snow Biome. However, that will all be included in a more advanced video for mid-game to end-game coming out later. Before we discuss specifics about dinos, we should explain how the dino AI and the dino variants in Jurassic Awakening work. So dino AI. Many dinos have a new AI added to travel together and work together in groups. 
For herbivores, this behavior includes traveling in herds, following an elder dino of the group, and protecting and defending the herd from threats as a group. If you attack a member of the herd, they will try to kill you. If you run away, they won't hunt you down, but will continue roaming as a herd. For carnivores, these herds will work together as a group to hunt down and attack prey and herds of herbivores, or you and your friends. There are multiple classes of dinosaur variants. One class describes where the dinosaur spawns on the map. Beach, river, coastal, jungle, grassland, etc. This class determines not only where the creature spawns, but also kind of what level it can be at max level. So beach dinos are relatively low level, and it's rare to see them above level 120. Pretty quickly, in the swamp and redwoods though, you can easily find level 300 wild dinos. Their base stats are also reworked. So for example, if you tame a level 100 jungle direwolf, it will not be as strong as a level 100 redwoods direwolf. The other class of variant is a modifier to the dino itself, and these include elder, young, strong, feral, and large. Elders are leaders of a pack of animals. So they're much higher level than the rest of the pack and usually have higher stats. Young variants spawn in smaller, move faster, and are a bit more aggressive and sometimes can have faster attack speed. Strong variants have substantially more HP and are slightly larger. Feral variants deal much more melee damage and are more aggressive. And large variants? Only a handful of dinos can spawn as large variants that are much larger than normal. Think a dillo that's the size of a carno. Large variants have much more health and damage than their regular version. At the beginner areas, the dinos you're likely to see are low-level beach variants of Parasaurs, Morellatops, Triceratops, Dodos, Dillos, Fiomia, Moschops, Galley Striders, Dimorphodon, and some Sand Scorpions. These will mostly be beach variants, and as far as I've seen, only the Trikes, Dillos, or Parasaurs have the herd or the pack variants, and you can find elder versions of these dinos as well. Babies spawn more often on the beach so that you can harvest prime meat more easily and get early game tames more easily, and trilobites are relatively common so that you can collect early game oil used to sharpen your weapons. Moving into the rivers and early jungle, you can find beavers, sarcos, stegos, megalania, kentrosaurus, and other similar dinos. You may even see a very rare sp spawn of a pteranodon in these areas. And into the forest slash grassland, you'll start to see tames that will help you progress into the next tiers of difficulty, such as raptors, higher level trikes, stegos, carnos, etc. It's important to know that tons of dinos in Jurassic Awakening drop loot compared to their vanilla counterparts. You can easily fight jungle megalania and pick up tons of improved armor pieces, improved bows, or improved tools and other weapons. At the beginning levels, you'll have access to basic vanilla tools. However, quickly you'll be able to upgrade to scrap metal weapons, then soon after forged versions of these weapons. Each weapon tier comes with a higher harvesting or damage stats and durability stats. So while the game may seem like a slog in the beginning, using only a stone pickaxe to try and build a thatch base on low harvest rates, before too long, you'll have a very strong Redwoods Mantis that can dual wield obsidian hatchets and harvest things like crazy. Armor has also had a major rework with different variants offering different layers of protection here. The early game Beach Gilly, crafted with chitin instead of the more rare polymer, is a great example of the mod reworking progression without adding tedium. There's also thick cloth armor sets, insulated or light hide armor sets, or bone armor, and even more. Each variant has not only different levels of protection from attack, but different levels of camouflage, weight, temperature resistance, and more features. Armor has better base durability, so you won't have to repair armor after every single dino encounter any longer. 
It repairs for cheaper than in vanilla as well. But two specific things I don't want you to miss in this early game period are two of my favorite things in all of Jurassic Awakening. Megalania Toxin and Spring Spike Traps. There are certain spots on the beach where it begins to transition into jungle where jungle megalania are relatively common. This is fantastic for you as they're likely to spawn in low level like 40 to 80 and can be killed relatively easily with spikes or bows and arrows. However, they have a high chance of dropping not just loot, but megalania toxin. In this mod at level six, you unlock the convert megalania toxin to narcotic engram. And in the mortar and pestle, you can convert one megalania toxin into five narcotic. Also at level 15, you unlock the spring spike trap. It's the first level of defense in Jurassic Awakening. It looks similar to a normal spike wall. However, it's actually a spring loaded trap that will impale anything that gets too close with great force. I can't tell you how much fun I've had just sitting in my base crafting stuff while hearing this thing go off constantly and killing roaming dinos trying to come near my base. Not only that, but it acts as a hands-off passive farm for meat, hide, and loot. At these low levels, you'll also unlock unique engrams to Jurassic Awakening, such as Dillo Armor, Meat Spoiling Box, Meat Cooler, Berry Storage Container, Campfire Grill, Sharpening Wheel, Improved Storage Boxes and Crates, and also my two favorite new engrams that Jurassic Awakening has added, the Incinerator and the Simple Egg Nest. The Incinerator acts as an early game grinder and gives you a small amount of resources back from all that free loot that you've been getting from the dinos. The Simple Egg Nest acts as an early game incubator, saving tons of time and effort compared to using torches, standing torches, and campfires. Now let's talk about stats and experience. Jurassic Awakening starts you off with different stats than Vanilla Ark does, and it also rewards each point into stats differently. A fresh survivor will have 300 HP and gain 30 per level, 130 stamina and gain 13 per level, 300 weight and gain 30 per level. You'll have higher food and water with slower degradation. This is due to there being so much more nomadic activity in Jurassic Awakening versus Vanilla. Crafting skill goes up 5% per level. This applies to like blueprints. Crafting speed goes up 10% per level. Fortitude goes up plus five per level. And oxygen starts at 160 and you gain 16 per level. Now, you are only allowed one stat respec per character, so use those mind wipes wisely. Health regeneration is much higher than in vanilla, but due to having such a large health pool to start off with, it can feel slower. XP gain comes more slowly in Jurassic Awakening, which is a good thing. Since there is so much progression and so many added engrams per level, you don't want to be flying through them like you might in vanilla. And just a note, Jurassic Awakening XP is weighted toward crafting and fighting. Passive XP seems lower than normal. Explorer notes only give you a 25 to 50% XP gain versus 200 to 400% like in vanilla. So forget those note runs and get out there and kill some of those cute little galley striders on the beach. Now trust me, this has seemed like a relatively complex guide, but it has only been an incredibly shallow surface exploration of everything that Jurassic Awakening has to offer. The mod is absolutely amazing and it is so in-depth. I really implore you to check out this mod, play around, and join their Discord as well. That way you'll be able to see everything that's coming up, you'll be able to take part of the polls, and you'll get to see what's working on, what they're working on. If you want to play, the mod authors do run two servers of their own, one PvE version and one PvP version for you to play the mod exactly as it's intended. Now it does work great in single player, and there are a handful of other servers running the mod as well. 
Now hit that like button, subscribe to Kyle Can't Game to see more content, and I expect to see you on the Jurassic Awakening board soon. Good luck, Survivor.